there's brand loyalty and brand recognition. Do you know the difference? These two actually get confused a lot, even by so-called brand experts. I literally just had this conversation, again, just a few weeks ago, with a brand expert. <laughs> but I think there is so much value in understanding all of the little distinctions when it comes to your brand. The difference between loyalty and recognition, the difference between sales and experience, this helps you set expectations, clarify where to spend your time and your energy, and perhaps most importantly, it actually helps you weed out bad advice for you, of which there is unfortunately a lot. So next time someone is blathering on about brand loyalty, you'll know that what they're calling loyalty is really just recognition, and you won't sweat it. Let's cut right to the chase. Brand recognition is the ability to identify a brand. So to kind of help explain this, let's see if you can name these brands taglines. Amazon. Yep, everything from A to Z. McDonald's. Mmm, I'm loving it. Most of us can rattle off this information about so many brands without hardly thinking about it. But ask yourself, are you loyal to these brands? Do you even go to McDonald's? If a competitor came along with low prices and no ads on their streaming content and more accurate shipping, would you pay more to stay with Amazon? Or would you jump ship to that new competitor? And if you don't go to McDonald's and if you wouldn't stay with Amazon, then you're not really loyal. And honestly, most of us aren't. Because loyalty is more personal. Wanting to follow and share, even when you're not buying. When you're loyal, you'll pay more or you'll go out of your way to support them. Because it's about more than price or convenience. And what does loyalty then look like? Well, in life, it looks like driving across town in horrific traffic to watch your niece play volleyball. Is that easy or convenient? Nope. Are you going to do it anyway? Yep. And this is ultimately what we're trying to con cultivate in some level with your brand. We're trying to cultivate a commitment deeper than just convenience. There's an intangible, there's a desire to support and brand recognition that can be bought. Big relentless ad campaigns over years can reliably deliver brand recognition, but loyalty that's earned. So when it comes to your own brand, learn to measure success by how deep the loyalty is, not by how many people recognize your brand. Popularity is not profitability, and neither is recognition. Let's create a quick fictional example to see how loyalty might, pay, might play out in a real brand. So let's say you're going to a home show because maybe you're remodeling your kitchen. On the way, you notice a billboard. It's advertising hard surfaces. It says something like, the best value in countertops. Smart placement, it's good timing. This board was near the venue where everybody's going to be driving by it, and it's up during the time of the home show. So you take notice and continue on your way. At the home show, let's say you're waiting to talk to a vendor, and another attendee's mug catches your eye. 
It's a reusable mirror mug. It's got a whimsical design on it. So you ask, where'd you get the coffee? Secretly hoping it's at the expo so you can snag one too. But their answer surprises you. Oh, I got it on the way here today. It's an adorable little coffee shop that's actually part of a counter shop company. Even if you're not in the market for counters, you should go. And you know what else they do? They take remnants that people would otherwise just throw out and they turn them into these like bespoke little bistro tables and no two are ever alike. And they actually use those in the coffee shop and you can buy them. And in the coffee shop, they have this beautiful fireplace and it's tiled and all these little tiny tiles that are leftover pieces and it's mismatched remnants, but these little four inch squares are arranged in such a perfectly beautiful way that you forget that it's just all the unwanted leftovers because you wouldn't want it different. And then this person goes on to tell you that when they were building their own house, that they would meet their designer there. And now it's been two years since they built that house, but they still go for coffee whenever they can. And at this point, we now have a portrait of two companies. They're both doing the same thing. They're both providing hard surfaces. One is doing what everyone else is doing. They're selling giant slabs out of a dusty warehouse or a yard, and then they're buying eyeballs. Remember, they have that billboard on the highway, and it's probably working for them. But the second is taking the road less traveled, where everyone else sees waste. They saw opportunity to use those remnants, and with it, they brand built. And now, now they have an experience. It doesn't just end at the sale. They're memorable. They can serve you even when you're not actively looking for countertops. It's got all of those intangibles. Which one are you going to remember? Which one would you drive a little bit out of the way to visit? Which would you recommend? And that first countertop company with the billboard might have a lot more recognition, but the second one has loyalty. And that's the game changer. Let's finish this lesson by learning how to turn bad situations around whenever you can. Studies actually show that customers who were upset, frustrated, disappointed at their initial experience who then had that company go above and beyond to make it right, were actually the most likely to become raving fans. The most likely to share that brand with their circle. Even more so than the people who were happy and delighted with their experience in the first place. And sure, a few complaints might just be habitually unhappy and entitled customers. You will probably encounter a few of these, but the rest, they are genuinely ready to forgive you. As long as you show up for them, you make them feel like they, them uniquely, they matter to your company and that the screw up isn't just a percentage you're okay having on the books. Oh, 5% of people are unhappy. We can write that off. But if you can make them feel like their individual experience matters, not only is this the good human thing to do, it's also wildly rewarding from a business standpoint. So here's how it works. Set aside a portion of your brand and marketing budget each year for exactly these cases. Invest in making them right and their loyalty and their positive word of mouth will be dollars better spent than almost anywhere else in your marketing budget. This is an opportunity. Earn their business, earn their loyalty.